Cardi B and Meg the Stallion drop an obscene video that could make a porn star blush. Hasbro pulls perverted doll off the shelves as Audi pulls a suggestive ad involving a child. Stay with us as we look at these and other stories on the 511 News. Now there are two kinds of people in the world, only two kinds, not black and white, not rich and poor. There are those who are dead in sin and there are those who are dead to sin. After three nights of unbridled lawlessness across London, the contagion is spreading. The problem is that God has already judged this. He has judged murder already. I don't need to question it. I don't need to ask and wonder what his plan is. We're commanded as Christians not to participate in the works of darkness, but expose them. Welcome back to the 511 News. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And on today's episode, you know, I almost said, and with me as always, <laughs> for the Good Fight Radio Show, but uh, on today's episode, I know I've uh, started off joking around a little bit, but today's episode is one that really, really gets at me. I mean, this whole situation, this just this whole dynamic, everything that's going on in the, in this world right now, it really, really gets to me, and we have been working on a very, very new subject for us because <laughs> we finished up our Bethel series, our five, it turned into a five-part series, and now we are working on putting that together, hopefully, for you guys uh, to make it available to you guys to be able to evangelize if you guys want to go to places like Bethel, and actually, we do plan a trip up uh, up by Simpson University in Reading to hopefully uh, hand out some of these uh, with a small group. Uh, I'm calling the 511 Street Team that will be heading out hopefully soon enough when we get those made and handing them out to people that are deep within Bethel and hopefully pull some people out of that false movement. So if you haven't checked that out, check that out. But it's something with the new studio, we're able to continue to make different series, and we had plans for one series, and Joe was working on the script, and I was speaking with him, and I said, hey, man, there's something on my heart as well. And I know, Tony, we've been talking about it a lot, and we're not going to let the cat out of the bag just yet. We're going to do that via a video to, to preview it for you guys, but I am beyond excited, but I'm just asking you for your guys' prayers because digging into this subject is really, really radical. Digging into the subject, it's a lot of dark, dark, dark stuff. And so we always want to pray that we're seeing enough to get information out, but we're never putting out too much that would uh, not only offend, but make someone stumble or anything like that. So it's something that it's hard to watch. It's hard to work on. You see the darkness and you just praise God that one day sin will be completely gone. It's gone in the way that Jesus Christ paid for the fine. He paid it in full, but gone in a way in our new heaven and new earth. I cannot wait for that day when sin is no more whatsoever. (laughs) And that brings me to this episode because I'm going to kind of go a little quick because we have a number of stories that I want to get to, but I want to quote this later and then I'm going to tell you a story behind it. This quote is from Alester Crowley. And if you guys don't know Alester Crowley, and, and some of you guys may say, hey, no, he wants to be called Crowley, or you don't know that that's what he wants to be called. It is originally Crowley, and in fact, even if you listen to Black Sabbath's song, it's called Crowley. He wanted to switch it to Crowley because it sounded like Crow. That is why, if you ever wonder why Joe Schimmel or myself or anyone at Good Fight doesn't call him Crowley, it's because we don't want to call him what he wants to be called, (laughs) and that's just the truth. And so I just wanted to put that out there real quick in case anyone ever has questions about that because you would not believe how many Satanists are like, it's Crowley, man. I'm like, hey, he liked to sacrifice little children, man. Uh, Anyways, so... He said this, circulated among the young, speaking of his teachings. That's where he wanted them, circulated among the young. He said, quote, there is hope there, if anywhere. Let me seduce the boys of England and the oldsters may totter unconverted to their graves. Then these boys becoming men may bring about the new heaven and the new earth. But without an army, I am useless. Give me my army, young men, and we will sweep these dogs into the sea. Now, if you guys know anything about Lester Crowley, you know very clearly that this man was a sexual, disgusting deviant. And I have to tell you, 
that I believe the fact is, is that that is exactly what Satan has used over and over and over again to get men to fall and for women to fall. And when you look through the Old Testament over and over again, when you see the great saints of old, when they would have stumble and falling that would take place, guess what? Typically involved sexual sin, whether we're talking about David, whether we're talking about Solomon, whether you're talking about um, Lot, whether you're talking about, man, just keep going down the list, or judges of Israel, kings of Israel, over and over again, you could be as strong as you want, ask Samson and still fall for sexual sin. So this is something that has been a problem. And the only victory that you will ever have is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And the fact is, is that Satan would love you to be a sexual deviant. And when you look at, especially false movements that have claimed to be Christian, whether it's hyper, hyper charismania and word of faith gospel, notice that a lot of times those churches fall into radical sexual sin. When we look at different movements, uh, Joseph Smith and even Gandhi, a lot of people talk about Gandhi, a guy who was over 70, year old, 70 years old, sleeping naked with his 17-year-old great niece or something. Guys, th- this is just a fact. Satan is a deviant and he wants to deviate from God's plan for the family. He wants to deviate from the plan for God's plan for our sexual identity, which is supposed to be found in scripture and with one woman cleave together, a man and a woman cleave together for life. And so when you see this sexual obscenity that is now on TV at a just nauseating rate, and this is normal TV now, guys. This is the stuff that you just click on, and it's worse yet, guys. This is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week on YouTube, and most of your kids have the access to it. And if they have a Twitter, then guess what? If they have a Twitter then they're going to see over and over again. In fact, it's going to be trending. And all you got to do is click a little button. And next thing you know, you can see people's booty shaking everywhere. It's pretty disgusting. And it's grotesque. And the fact is, is that these people are after your children. Before I talk about Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B, I wanted to talk about a video I brought up before in the past. But I wanted to clarify because I said, look at the absolute obscenity and I was showing just screen grabs to Tony because we didn't want to watch the disgusting video and it was from an artist known as Iggy Azalea I'm sure a lot of you guys know who she is she's from Australia and she has a song literally called Fancy she did with I know Gwen Stefani and that song is about to hit I'm sure at some point will hit a billion views a billion views a billion just think about it the United States has what 330 million people a billion views on her YouTube channel. And so I, I want to get that across because this is also a girl who has another song out there called P-U and then money sign, money sign Y. You can all understand exactly what she's talking about if I just give you that, <laughs> give you that little portion there. And the fact is, is that in that video, I believe without a doubt, she is hinting at pedophilia. She has a very young little boy in between her legs and in the very next scene is riding a stallion right next to her, riding a fake little pony right next to her and then in between her legs and then she's making suggestive lyrics, then she's making suggestive things with ice cream and it's just absolutely disgusting and the whole thing is centered around children. There's children and an ice cream truck and children sitting suggestively grabbing around her looking almost like it's her boyfriend and then sitting between her legs. And this is disgusting. But over and over again, this is the stuff that is peddled to children in the United States as normative. This is peddled to children as these are the icons. These are the idols, the American idols. These are them. And there's, they, sadly, you walk into a youth group here in America. Now, you don't, I guess you don't have to, you have to watch into a youth group Zoom meeting for most of them. But you walk into a youth group and these are the artists they're going to be talking about if you hear, if you just had some mics in the room, sadly. And it's heartbreaking. I remember when Carl Lentz from Hillsong, I was doing some research on him when I saw him take a picture with Justin Bieber and Kevin Durant and sitting courtside. And I remember on one of the pictures, he specifically had the lyrics from John Lennon's song, Imagine. Now, Imagine with me, 
somebody having lyrics who is a quote unquote pastor. He's a blind leading the blind if we want to actually get down to it. But a quote unquote pastor wearing a shirt that might as well say, imagine Jesus is a liar. Because Jesus promised us heaven. Jesus promised that he, when he goes away, he goes to prepare a place for us. But when you have lyrics to a song on your shirt, because you think you look really hip with it, and those lyrics say, basically say, instead of um, his shirt said, imagine all the people, the true lyrics said, imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. To glorify that sort of thing is positively and ridiculously disgusting. But I remember reading an article that was early on in his ministerial career, and it talked about his youth group that was growing in Virginia Beach. And at that youth group, it talked about when you walk in, you would hear songs from Lady Gaga. When he drives up in his motorcycle, he's got, I I can't remember if it was Rolling Stones or Leonard Skinner or something along those lines, got that t-shirt on. And it was like, bro, do you just have to be everything the world wants you to be? I remember going to a church service, and this is something I'll do, and uh, being a wrestling coach for the number of the years that I have been, I would take guys to the national championships down in Virginia Beach, and we go to different churches, and I remember walking in and hearing Coldplay, and I just thought to myself, gee, just from a somebody who was a non-believing God-hater before I was saved, who on earth walks into a church, hears Coldplay, and is like, this is where I got to be. I, I'm so excited that I'm hearing Coldplay right now. Now I feel accepted. No, that's silliness. That's ridiculous. First of all, they're terrible. Second of all, <laughs> objectively, no, I'm just kidding. But I, they, I mean, they're terrible. You can go look at our video we have on Coldplay. Actually, I think the internet, I think our YouTube channel, we got struck down on that video. It might be, I don't know if it's up anymore on Beyonce and Coldplay playing the Super Bowl. But these two are whack jobs, man. And the fact is, is that this isn't pulling anybody in. All you're doing is taking those who may be believers and may be young in their faith, and you're saying, just be exactly like you were before you were saved, and that is a Christian. And it's not. That's not the Christianity that we read about in the New Testament. It's not there. It doesn't exist. We are holy brethren, separated. We have the Holy Spirit inside of us. When somebody looks looks to the church, it shouldn't look like a nightclub. And then you have diet parties on on Friday nights at your college groups and diet parties where they're not even as extreme. So then typically, as my friends did, me and my friends did before we were saved, before I knew the Lord, we would pick up girls at the local Christian diet party and we would go actual, have the debaucherous times we wanted and then drop them back off to their diet Christian party. And the fact is, is that we need to get away from that. We need to be holy brethren. If somebody is re- is revolting from you because you look too much like the Lord, that is their problem. I'm sorry. That is their problem, not yours. We need to make sure that when somebody comes to know the Lord, they come to a place where they can be sanctified. They come to a place where God will be glorified. And we will not sit there and play Lady Gaga and nonsense at our churches and think this is okay. And I say this because my wife attended a somebody who was claiming to be a Christian at the time, went to attend her uh, bachelorette party. And when she got there, guess whose song was on? Iggy Azalea, the one basically pushing pedophilia in a different song. Iggy Azalea was on. And my wife's like, do you know who this is? I'm like, yeah, let me explain. It's, it's worse than you think. <laughs> and I'm like, that's disgusting, man. That's heartbreaking. We need to actually care about this stuff and see what people are pushing. And it's not just that. And that I, I mentioned the nudist, newest, the nudist. Yeah, it might as well have been uh, the newest song from Cardi B and Meg The Stallion, a song called WAP. And yes, or WAP or whatever. Um, it's an acronym for something really disturbing and disgusting. But it is like as I said in the intro, it could make a porn star blush. This song is grotesque and disgusting and in fact i would never have looked up or heard the lyrics if not for i think in the background somebody had on a a ben shapiro episode and ben shapiro was saying the lyrics trying to edit out some but he was saying some of them i was like bro you probably shouldn't have said all those lyrics because it's still pretty ugly and bad but nonetheless he was saying them and i was like whoa i gotta turn this off this is crazy come to find out that the video which i did not watch but i've read some commentary on it 
is just as disgusting as the song. And I even watched a video today from somebody who was not a believer, but was talking about, I can't believe that this is being put out. I have a daughter. How could they be putting this stuff out? No wonder the world is like it is when it comes to sexuality. And a lot of people are are saying, oh, well, this is just sexist. You didn't mind when men did it. I hope you mind when men did it. I remember having a discussion with someone. They turned on a movie, and on the movie, the women were just obscene. And if you know anything about the stand-up comedy in, in on the women's field, ninety percent of their comedy is just disgusting. It's just I want to be, at, I want to cuss as much, talk about sex as much, and and farting and all this weird stuff as much as I possibly can, because that'll make me funny because I'm a woman saying it, and it's disgusting. And I said, it's sad because this is exactly what Satan wants. He wants to take those things. He'll have Betty White come out and ha- say, you know, disgusting things. And you want to see old women telling dirty jokes or they'll have young kids cussing uh, as young kids in their shows. And this is exactly you want to take something that typically is supposed to be innocent and you want to make it dirty and filthy. Guys, had, they've been doing this with men for a very, very, very long time. And when we look at the rap community, now we have the obscenity of the women talking about this gross stuff. But the fact is, is the men have been talking about this for a long time and the culture has not helped because of it. It's been absolutely abhorrent to the culture. And don't think that country music is immune to this either. Not to mention my Jesus and my whiskey, that whole narrative, but then just follow down the trail over and over again with alcohol and drugs mentioned. Don't think that it's immune. I remember somebody, me asking, hey, you know, did you, what, you know, what were you up to last night? Yeah, I couldn't make it. You know, we were watching uh, uh, an award show. I was like, oh, I hope it was Christian. Just joking. Well, it might as well have been. It was the country music awards. I'm like, Oh, yeah, I think they have more references, and I'll have to fact check this, but I remember Joe talking about it, but he said that they have more references to drugs and alcohol than rap does. Country. Just incredible to hear that. But, yeah, so don't think you're doing okay because you're listening to country music. You're being lied to, and I hope by now you realize what has happened with Taylor Swift. If you have been someone who has listened to Taylor Swift, like, oh, I loved Teardrops on my guitar, and now you know what she's up to, I hope that you're not going back to listen to teardrops on your guitar. I hope the teardrops is, I'm sorry that you're reprobate and you need to be saved and you can cry for her, but don't go and listen and and help her financially. That, I mean, she has literally thrown you under the bus. If you claim to be a believer and still listen to that music and you know, you can go carry underwood. I remember Ray comfort did a show said, Jesus, give me back that wheel or something along those lines. You know, when her and her husband came out as pro homosexual, and this is supposed to be the Christian, right? She went up to one of the award shows and sang how, uh, our, what song is that that she sang? Not How Great Is Our God, but, uh, oh Lord my God, when I am awesome wonder, consider all, you know that song? Um, how, great art. how Great Thou Art. There it is. Thank you, Tony, the music expert. I <laughs> had to botch some singing up there to get the right song, but... Uh, but no, I and and you have them singing up there, obviously with David Crowder, and he has a connection with Rob Bell. So I'm not getting down that rabbit trail. But the point is, is that we are allowing our children to listen to these artists. Who, I mean, if you're allowing your kid at this point to listen to Cardi B or Meg Thee Stallion, I gotta ask where you're at with your walk. I'm just gonna call you out. I gotta be honest. If I found my kid listening to something like that. I don't know. I'm like, Lord, help me not to have my head literally explode because this is the most obscene thing. I mean, Madonna is probably blushing, which would be a hard thing for her, obviously. And also the fact is, is that it's because of Madonna and other forerunners that women have been absolutely obscene in the music industry. And you can see literally it was like the the passing off. Here's my demons when she gave it over to Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera when they kissed. And then you see all the artists that would then follow after them from the Katy Perry's and the Kesha's and so forth. And guys, this is just sad. And they're going after the children. That is exactly what's taking place and it's not just it's not just Iggy and Cardi B and Meg Thee Stallion and Kesha and all these artists you know making songs but guys there's some suggestive stuff going out there that's hard it's hard to even talk about I'm going to play a clip here and I want to give some 
This is a short clip so you guys can hear it yourself because I tried to explain it and I I was talking to Joe and I said, I do not want to explain the noise that I hear. And my kids were there, so it was tough even discussing it. And I said, but on this doll that Hasbro put out and the doll... If you know anything about the the Trolls series, it's one of the, it's supposed to be a troll that they put out, and it had a little button to press to make a sound, and it makes this sound when they press a button on this little troll doll for children, right in the privacy, as my as we call it. <laughs> like a gasping sound. And I know some of you may not like think this is a big deal, but especially since I've had kids, like this is wrong. For one, this button, it says nothing about this button on the box. Nothing. It's Guys, that's pretty crazy if you think about where they put that button, that this went through production at Hasbro. This went through production and went out for sale, they probably, I would guess, typically they bring in people to see if they like the doll. You are having little girls press a button on a girl's private parts and making, yeah, I was thinking the focus groups as Tony talked about. I don't know, maybe or maybe not, but I'll have Tony put a link so you guys can see it yourself because honestly, when I saw it, I was like, wow, it's worse than even reading it. it it's really, really bad. And this is normalizing this stuff. This is normalizing it. And if you look at, I don't know if any of you guys have watched the Jeffrey Epstein, not only our video, but also the Jeffrey Epstein video that's on Netflix, the documentary series, the four-part documentary series, but how he groomed these young girls and how he went after girls that were in poor neighborhoods and brought them to a nice rich house for a a rich guy to do, you know, quote unquote, massage, massage, uh, massages. There we go. And you, uh, it's it's really hard to even express, but you see how he goes after them and how he gets them in a vulnerable position. And I know one of the girls that are on there was sexually abused before Jeffrey Epstein sexually abused her. And this is exactly right. This is what happens. This is normal. It's about getting that money, right? Cardi B, right? She bragged about drugging a guy and stealing his stuff. She, you know, this is who they are. She was a stripper and now she's out there and, you know, I, I look at it and I see it and I was as I was expressing to Tony is just looking at the the climate, looking at the things that are going on and then looking at my daughters, trying to watch through the Epstein documentary, trying to watch through some of these things that we've talked about on 511 News and on Good Fight about child sex trafficking and I look at my daughters and and I I I man I I get so frustrated and and I wanted to talk about this because I I would hate for somebody's heart to get hardened on this subject because I can tell you that I I can personally tell you that I remember a distinct time where I was watching and if you guys remember Chris Hansen from Dateline NBC to catch a predator uh, that was a series that went out and I think it kind of opened the eyes to a lot of people and I pray that. I hope that what happened was some people were scared enough about being on that show that they didn't go and take advantage of young children. And he would basically set up this sting operation. And then it was it was awesome because in the first season, he wasn't really involved with the cops as much. But then after I think they saw what was going on, they got involved in these sting operations. And every single person, eventually, they, I, think, I believe they were getting arrested right afterwards. And Chris Hansen would basically set up these meetings and have this young actor, but the young actor was over 18, but they looked really young. And then they w- the the perverts would walk in to take advantage of these kids and, you know, someone would bring alcohol and liquor and, and stuff. Uh, I just said the same thing, alcohol and drugs, weed, whatever it is, and they would bring it in. And then Chris Hansen would come out, hey, I'm Chris Hansen from Dateline NBC. And they would make up all these excuses. I've never done this before, all this stuff. They're like, well, actually, we know you have done this before, you know. And I remember watching video after video. And I just don't think that we're even made to watch video after video on stuff like that. I I don't think our brains are are ready for those things because I knew I wasn't because I was getting to a point where my my heart was hardening towards these people. And this is before I had kids or anything. And I was just watching video after video and I was in, I was in like rage tears. Like I, I want to do something. 
And I remember just shutting my computer. I'm like, Lord, help me because I do not want to get a cold heart towards anyone when it comes to sharing the gospel. But this is really hard to watch. This is really hard to look at. And and the fact is, is that from Hasbro to Cardi B to Meg the Stallion to Madonna to Britney Spears to Taylor Swift to Audi, as we're going to be moving on to there, they've all been used. And this is why I've this is why I came to Christ. Because I recognized when I watched they sold their souls to rock and roll, I recognized there was a synergy that it wasn't just a bunch of people's, you know, brain, you know, moist robots, as Frank Turk would call them, you know, moist robots just just moving along as the DNA tells them to. It wasn't just that. There was a spiritual side to the wickedness that I saw from these artists that were all pushing the same agenda. And when I see these deviant agendas being pushed, when you have Beyonce, I'm not even going to get into the Blackest King and Baphomet stuff she's getting into, but when you have her talking about how she wants to be like a man, you know, she wants to she wants to just sleep around and be like a man. When you see this narrative, this agenda from all these artists, whether guys or girls, going forth recognize it's a spiritual battle it's spiritual warfare and recently audi was involved in having to take down a an ad as well they put a red sports car with a young girl i i think couldn't be more than between four and six years old a young girl dressed up like an adult suggestively eating a banana in front of the red sports car i mean what are you doing what are you doing doing this stuff And parents, what are you doing letting your child be involved in this? Whoever let their young son be involved in Iggy Azalea's video or whoever let their young daughter to be involved going in front of this Audi dressed in this suggestive manner eating a banana, what are you doing as parents? Over and over again, when you look at what happened with Epstein, a lot of times the house was messed up. And this is the same quote unquote nuclear family that Black Lives Matter and their founders still, if you go to Black Lives Matter and what they believe, they want it destroyed. The actual family that would make up the safeguards that God has planned and put in place to make up safeguards so that this stuff doesn't happen, so that they can say, don't listen to Cardi B, don't listen to Meg the Stallion, turn that disgusting stuff off. That dynamic, the 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 father that would watch out and for those wicked men coming in to steal their children, those people coming in to try to take them and get involved in disgusting things, that's what they want to separate so we can have villages. You know what the village is? The villages are clearly put together as a structure, those villages, to bring out the pedophilia, to bring out this stuff. That's what's happening because they're not bought by Christ. They are being used by the evil one. This is a spiritual battle. If we do not understand, if we do not get that this is a spiritual battle, we are going to lose. If every one of these sex trafficking people that we support are non-believers, we're going to lose the battle. Because if we pull someone out of sex trafficking and they no longer sex traffic the rest of their life but then go to hell, what are we doing? We need to preach the gospel. It is the only victory. Our only victory banner is Jesus Christ. We need to be on the front lines of these things. And to start it, to start it is to make sure your home is right. And hey, Christians, I've talked about this. If you're a Christian, think about adopting. Honestly, think about it. I want to encourage Christians. Think about adopting. Why not? Because a lot of these kids that are getting caught up, and if you watch the Epstein documentary, a lot of the people getting caught up in that, They're in broken families. How about you bring them to a family with Jesus? How about you put Jesus into their life? Just something to think about. I don't want to, you know, I'd hate to convict you. That's not true. Uh, I would love to convict you, but it's something on my heart and, and it's breaking my heart to watch these things. And one of the things that's happening is Satan is sneaking in through that little device that your kids have. Don't let him sneak in there. Don't let him get a foothold on your child's life. Do not let him take them from you. Watch over them. Love them. In Jesus' name. The 511 News with Chad Davidson has been brought to you by Good Fight Ministries, bringing you news and commentary from a Christian perspective. This show can be heard every Friday wherever podcast shows are available. Or visit 511news.org. 
Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to being with you next week on the 511 News.